Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Fel Monks and Plays Doki Doki Literature Club. So, um, I think it's fair to address I have taken a little bit of a break in between episodes, in between sittings. Um, I don't know if this is the kind of game that would require you to play it in one go, but maybe this little break will actually... Uh, you know, give me a little more of a, an appreciation for the game, especially since I've regained my ability to properly pronounce and uh, enunciate words and sentences again. So I hope you'll be <laughs> you'll be uh, you'll be happy to know that I'll be putting in a little bit more effort into reading my lines now. Anyway, uh, we are about to compose our third poem, I believe, right? So let us just start with something as innocuous as marshmallow. <laughs> Depression, anxiety, horror. Um, some things starting to creep in here. Um, there's a lot of stuff actually. Depression, un unstable, anxiety, explode, hurt. Another thing that I'm thinking maybe might be going on is that they might change the words that you're going to get for the future poems by sort of filtering the one the, the, the words you've used before. That might be it. Let's go with feather. This after image thing keeps popping up. Since the very beginning, though. Um, pleasure. Hmm. I don't know. Thing is, I don't want to choose the words that are really, you know, off-putting. Especially since, you know, they don't really fit together with the other ones so far, but... When I look at the uh, quote-unquote positive ones they give me here, I wouldn't call them simple, but they just don't fit. They're not um, expressive enough, maybe, what I'm looking for here. You see what I mean? I feel like they deliberately make you have to make a hard decision here. Like, Sparkle, who writes a poem or sparkle in it, you know? Uh, let's go with cheer, maybe. Together. I'll just go with a friendship uh, theme in this one. Special. I know who's gonna like this word, and I can tell you right now. Uh, I don't know. Maybe melancholy. I can, I can give her a throw her a bone. <laughs> what else? What else? Flying, maybe beauty. Hmm. Okay, plot twist. Alone. <laughs> oh, it's still Sayuri. I wasn't uh, counting on that. Hmm. Disarray. <laughs> Maybe not hopeless, but. Hmm. Again, I have no idea how much this, or at all, if it will uh, influence what is going to happen in the future. Hmm. Hopeless is really the only one that fits here, but it's too... Hmm. I mean, we had 12 out of, tw out of 20, so I'll put a hopeless in there. It's still Sayuri. Weird. 
Yeah, we did get some insight into her character that she might have some uh, problems with depression, maybe? Or some sort of manic depression. Hmm. <laughs> Doki Doki. <laughs> Not really. Let's go full. It's always her. Okay. I'm starting to see a pattern. <laughs> That's another thing. With the with these words you also get to get a hint at their personalities even more than you would have before. Fester. That would be a horrible if it was her, but I'm kind of I'm afraid it might be her if I put it in there. Hmm. That's kind of twisted in the in a positive direction again. Uh, hmm. Shopping. Hmm. Let's close it out with friends, because they are hopefully the ones that put people back into uh, into a sane state. Anyway, oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Will you practice the piano again? Yeah. Ah ha ha. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember the club that the club would, wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Yeah, the festival's coming up. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. Yeah, she uh, doesn't like to put herself out there. And I don't think she's shy at all, but public speaking requires you that you can sort of withstand the judgment of strangers. You know what I mean? Even though if you'd look at her, you wouldn't expect that at all. Or maybe it's just that she doesn't... It might It might be more about she doesn't think anybody's... It's, it's not anybody's business to know her poems and what she's... What goes on inside her, I guess. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious foods. Sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica. Do they usually have fried squid? Ugh, I hate that. Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people. Eh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by all, you, you of all people? Because. It's right in your name. Monica? Monica... I don't get it. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Good one, game. Question mark? Ah, never mind. <laughs> uh, let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? I mean, it's a joke, but again, she seems to be the one that is the most meta out of all of them. And, um... You know, I feel like the developers are talking to me when I read her poems, mostly. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? 
Where's Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Yeah, don't they usually walk to uh, the club together? Oh yeah, uh, I guess maybe e either she was early or he's late. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. Ooh. I walk over to her. Hey Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah. Eh, eh sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Maybe she wants to be alone. It's how it's weird how that one poem like turns everything on its head when it comes to her character. Is everything all right? Oh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine. See. Sorry shows me a big smile. Yeah, could just very well be a, uh, you know, a mask. Like a lot of people put on masks uh, to show in front of people if they uh, don't want to talk about a specific thing, or you know, don't be, <clears throat> don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, all right, if you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask if uh, ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Function, what's up? Hey, this man sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little into it a little bit too much, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Monica, there's something on her mind. Or maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you for function. What? You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bother her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her, and I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll talk to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. <laughs> That's a good point. Person of interest? Yeah, get the hint, me. What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, function. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well... <laughs> come on... <laughs> Can't be... I mean, a lot... I've, I've seen that kind of stuff a lot. I don't know if it's mostly men? But maybe you just don't see it that much in women, but very often when it comes to them, they try not to i'm not saying they can't empathize or read into people's uh, feelings and thoughts but i think they very often it's always the last thing on their minds it's the thing and so we very often misinterpret things about ourselves or don't get you know subtle hints about us or somebody who's um, who's interested in us and whatever, and it would fit the character that we're playing here as well. Since I, th I have a pretty good feeling that Sayori has had a crush on us for a long time, <clears throat> and uh, our character being completely oblivious until not too long ago. So I probably shouldn't say too much, but. <laughs> Sorry, he talks about you more than anything else, you know? Yeah. Eh? 
She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside her. What? No way. Sorry is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. Yeah, maybe it's mostly when she's together with you and otherwise she's very different. It's not any different now that it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Function. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Dot dot dot. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do, you, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. I think that's a good thing. We should have more... If it's... If the girl in question has a hard time communicating that, or communicating that in a way that lets her be understood, I am always happy with somebody else uh, being the messenger. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her uh, that are letting this weigh on me so much? Weigh me down so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Dot dot dot. Okay, everyone. Me, my son. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. I wonder what Sayori's look, uh, look like. Who should I show my poem to first? I think we should go with Sayori first. Because I don't want to, I don't know, I just don't want to be, I want her, don't want her to feel like I'm leaving her out to dry. Even though I think I've made every uh, possible effort towards uh, them, you know, actually going beyond the awkwardness and, you know, actually figuring stuff out that they've been hiding from each other. Okay, here we go. Dot dot dot. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Fun Function. Uh, thanks. Mm hmm. Dot dot dot. Sorry, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Eh? Of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? Only want to see smiles on your face. I mean, we're also a little presumptuous. I mean, it could just, it could be anything. I mean, in a, in a realistic situation, <laughs> if it wasn't, just wasn't an anime, uh, visual novel sort of game, I would be like, maybe she's had a rough time with her parents. Maybe uh, uh, she's got a bad grade in one of her tests or whatever, stuff like that, you know? And she, the fact that she doesn't want to, you know, bring that up with me because she doesn't want to feel badly in front of me or whatever, that might be another thing to consider. I don't know. Well, all right. Oh, hey, Fun Function. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait. Of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. 
Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. Wow. The music changed and everything. You know, I've, I've not been trying to uh, score points, so to speak, in, in the way I've composed my poems with her. Uh, score points with her, I mean. But, uh, or score points in general uh, with any of them. I'm just trying to uh, associate. It's, it's basically word association, obviously. Um, it just turned out that way, right? So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? No. Wow. That struck a chord. Thumb function. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Uh, that's a very unhealthy attitude. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori? We glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed us. Sayori, I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps sh shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing for motion. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. Ah ha ha ha. You can't bottle up those feelings. <laughs> like, her analogy in her last poem is pretty much exactly what I'm feeling right now. Like, this bottle shattering again is what brought this up. And uh, she's just retweeting as, as well. And uh, instead, we just should just maybe, you know, go in a separate room and actually have a talk. But... I'm also trying to be realistic here. <clears throat> Those are high school students or whatever, so... You know, emotional maturity and all that often prevents you from thinking. Or just experience in general is very often what's lacking. And that's why, you know, teenage high school drama is a thing, you know? It's, it's nothing exceptional so we'll just have to see it through i promise it won't happen again don't don't promise that shit doesn't happen again just be honest with your feelings just smiles from everyone okay that's all that matters that's really bad thinking go play with everyone else i'm gonna go home a little bit earlier today sorry tell monica i wasn't feeling well okay this is interesting I wonder if she would have said the same thing were she the last in line I showed the poem to. I'll see you tomorrow. Interesting. Very interesting. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Now, this is the romance movie moment where you run out the to the corridor and uh, insist that you know, be the two of you be open to each other. Maybe not, you know, don't force force yourself uh, into the issue. You know, give her an opportunity to say like, okay, let's meet tomorrow after school instead of going to the club and, you know, talking things through. Or, you know, maybe even after the club or, uh, on the same day. Who knows? But I have a feeling he's not going to do that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with Monica right now. Just to maybe bring up Sayori right away. Hi, Function. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing. But performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Especially, I'd have to actually um, know what the hell I was writing all this time. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. Uh, it would also make me happy to see. Uh -huh. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I have Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Also, one more thing. like uh, 
Sayori didn't show me a poem, apparently. Just for the record, right? She didn't show me anything. I just showed you... I just showed her mine. That's it. Okay. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Dot, dot, dot. Ah, ha, ha. It's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori's poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? Ah, I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing as much of her this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me. About how you... About how Sayori's been a little bit off today? Yeah? Did she tell you something? Ah. Uh, well... For Monction, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Of course not. What's co what's considered flirting it's, uh, at this point? I've been treating her like I always do. Well, we've been gi giving her some signals, dude. You gotta admit. Alright. Just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Well, you don't bring that shit up. If there was not some actual concern there. And you don't seem like your picture doesn't really tell me concerned right now. So you has been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Dot dot dot. Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Eh, it kind of is, but whatever. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Er, uh, all right. The Lady Who Knows Everything An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever, ever sought. And here I am, a feather. <clears throat> Lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the mind. No, of the currents of the wind. Could be either or, depending on a... Handwriting, but it's definitely a W since it's printed. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky? Twilight sky, yeah. Lost a drip. Wait, sorry about that. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more. Gently as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Hmm. Lady who knows everything. Let's... Hmm. It's a tale of disillusionment. And it is a tale, like, it has characters and stuff like that, so... Maybe an allegory for... Um... Atheism? <laughs> if I'm reaching a little bit? Maybe not too much. Uh, since... Or not, not especially atheism or, you know finding out that God doesn't exist or that God doesn't have the answers but uh, in general general like uh, could also be a mother figure who turns out to be as fallible as everyone else some sort of trusted entity of that kind you know yeah it's very well written as well 
Like, I've been continually impressed with the quality of the writing in this game. And I think that should be applauded. And uh, that's, on its own, that's kind of an accomplishment. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosoph philosophical or anything, but it was kind of an... My, uh, it was kind of on my mind, so that's why. Well, that's what I wrote. But it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't know if I agree with being able to have all the answers because you can keep searching and searching and you'll find out new stuff that you wasn't you weren't really uh, aware of that you don't understand yet oh well you know there's one thing i noticed it seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy ah uh -huh. are you surprised i mean if everything was okay you wouldn't really have anything to write about would we that's true humans are aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, that's... <laughs> yeah, that. Monica at it again! With the fourth wall breaking. <laughs> Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or bad, or <clears throat> good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it will make you want to continue improving. It's also like having your own little literature club, don't you think? And that's kind of why Yuri, even though as a type and as a... You know, my first impression of her. Uh, sorry to get this back on that one track that we've sort of lost earlier. Uh, that's why she was so off-putting to me at, in that moment when she uh, criticized Natsuki. Even though there was really no uh, nothing wrong with her poem except for the language. Which somehow she, she think, thinks that... Uh, simple language as a as a problem in and of itself she didn't really strike a chord or she didn't really uh help her out all she did was just antagonize her and that's kind of you know that's my advice for the day and monica kind of points that out too without getting too, too specific thanks for listening well we got two more but the episode's been running long enough, I think, already. Uh, I'm going to take a break here. So uh, we'll continue on with Natsuki and Yuri in the next one. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I know we haven't yet hit that spark that everybody who, in, who was so invested in me playing it and kept recommending it to me and so on. We haven't hit the spark yet where the story goes off the rails, batshit crazy or whatever. I still don't know what exactly is going to happen. But I've heard that I'm pretty close to it, so we'll see. Anyway, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.